Good morning. I'm Kenneth Moten. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Friday. Number one, Hurricane Dorian has picked up speed as it batters the North Carolina coast. Damage right now is being reported as far inland as Raleigh. Flash flooding could threaten coastal areas with up to 15 inches of rain and a possible seven foot storm surge. Widespread damage was left behind by 20 reported tornadoes, which knocked out power to nearly 300,000 people. Poor deaths are blamed on Dorian here in the U.S. Meanwhile, in the Bahamas, the death toll is at least 30, but that number is expected to climb dramatically. 70,000 people are estimated to be in need of humanitarian assistance. U.S. Coast Guard helicopters are ferrying storm victims to safety and bringing aid to remote areas. More relief supplies will arrive today. Number two, fire crews in Southern California are battling fast-moving flames, burning dangerously close to a residential neighborhood. The wildfire has exploded in size, growing to about three square miles, and it's still only about 10% contained. Mandatory evacuations are underway in and around the city of Marietta. Officials say lightning started the fire. On to number three now, an American Airlines mechanic is due in federal court today to face charges that he sabotaged a passenger jet with 150 people on board. Court documents say the mechanic disabled the plane's navigation system because he was upset about stalled contract negotiations between his union and the airline. He said he was hoping to cause a delay and pick up some overtime. Aviation experts are stunned. This is quite frankly extremely shocking to me because it's a tremendous breach of faith and it's a breach of faith to all the other mechanics, tens of thousands of them who would never ever do something like this. And this is the equivalent of trying to knock an airplane out of the sky and murder everybody aboard. The plane was set to fly from Miami to the Bahamas in July. Fortunately, the tampering triggered an error message alerting pilots so they aborted the takeoff. Number four, the list of retailers asking customers not to openly carry guns into their stores is growing. CVS, Walgreens, and Wegmans food markets have now joined Walmart and Kroger. Wegmans calls it a preference rather than a ban. This all follows recent mass shootings in Texas and Ohio. And finally, we had to Major League Baseball for number five. Marlins pitcher Brian Moran made his Major League debut against the Pirates, and the second batter he faced was his brother. Brian struck out his younger brother, Colin. Their family was watching in the stands, had a pretty good laugh at that strikeout. Much more to talk about coming your way this Friday. And it's morning, America. All right, good Friday morning. Let's get right to that big story we've been talking about all week. Hurricane Dorian now battering the Carolina coast with relentless rain and a storm surge that could top seven feet. Here's where the storm is right now. It picked up speed overnight as it tracked along the coast of North Carolina. At least four deaths are blamed on the storm here in the U.S. Looking at the wind gusts, the effects could be devastating. Nearly 300,000 power outages were reported overnight. Winds could hit 100 miles per hour in some areas. We have a team up and down the coast of the Carolinas, beginning with ABC's Megan Tevrizian. Megan, good morning. Good morning, Kenneth and Janae. As Dorian bears down on North Carolina, here in Charleston, we're seeing the aftermath of the storm, like broken awnings and litter or debris littering the ground. Hurricane Dorian racing through the Carolinas, causing destruction, flooding, and at least 20 reported tornadoes. Which way is it going? Near Myrtle Beach, families had a run from the twisters. Someone drove this Jeep onto the beach, the storm taking it away. The high winds whipping off the siding of these apartment buildings. All of a sudden, the windows broke through loose. Um, everything was swirling in our bedroom. Wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour tearing down power lines, knocking out electricity to hundreds of thousands. Stores boarding up in Wilmington, North Carolina, as homeowners deal with the flooding. The governor urging residents to hunker down. WTVD's Diane Wilson coast. is there. The heavy winds and the rain are here. Several tornadoes throughout our area this afternoon, and it's only expected to get worse as Dorian continues to pummel the coast and make the eye here to Wilmington. A water spout whipped up by the outer bands of Hurricane Dorian destroyed homes at this mobile home park along the North Carolina coast. The town manager in Emerald Isle saying the damage on the barrier island was concentrated just inland from the Atlantic Ocean. ABC's Rob Marciano is in Nags Head in the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Another fierce rain band is coming in. Just got an alert on my phone to shelter in place from Dare County. So it's time to hunker down. 
And as Charleston starts cleaning up the map mess left behind by Dorian, the storm is now moving north. North Carolina is now facing hurricane force winds and flash flooding remains a major concern there. Kenneth, Janae. And Megan, I mean, we know you've been out there for a while. Around this time yesterday, we were talking to you. We could see the wind picking up in the rain. What have you seen over the course of those 24 hours or so? Well, it's a much different scene now than it was 24 hour, hours ago. That's for sure, Janae. Uh, but, you know, the power was out for nearly 250,000 customers yesterday in the Charleston area. The power went back on late last night. The restaurants here, they tell us that they plan to open either later today or tomorrow. Even just a few hours ago, we were seeing delivery trucks here delivering goods to these restaurants. So it's going to be hopefully um, business back to usual pretty soon. All right, Megan, thank you so much for joining us there. A massive relief effort for the Bahamas is getting underway as one official there is talking in the starkest terms about the situation. An American aid shipment arrived last night from Miami. It included plastic sheeting for 35,000 people and water for 3,000. A search and rescue team from Virginia is there and more American crews are arriving today. A horrific part of this story, this woman in Florida learned that at least six members of her family died in the storm. Julie Edwards says others are still missing. The death toll is at least 30 people, and the top health official in the Bahamas says the final count could be staggering. And a Miami entrepreneur is using his organization's seaplane to ferry Americans back to the U.S. and bring relief supplies to the Bahamas. He's calling on the American government to set up relief efforts. And ABC's Brad Milkey takes a look at how the U.S. decides how much aid will be sent to the Bahamas. Brad, good morning. Hey guys, yeah, it is clear that the Bahamas need help. They need money, they need manpower. What is unclear is how much the U.S. will give them. In most natural disasters, the affected country will take whatever aid it can get. But the Bahamas is of particular importance to the U.S. since it's even closer to our shores than Cuba. And some national security experts are wondering if other countries like China might be using this opportunity to gain influence in our backyard. Colonel Steve Ganyard is a former State Department official. He's now an ABC News contributor. Most of the time when the Chinese do this, they'll come in with a big number and say, we're going to commit billions of, of, of uh, dollars to, uh, to a particular problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but by the time they actually pay it out, it's some small fraction of that. They're also looking for ways that they can exploit that. When they do this in Africa, they'll go in and say, oh, we're going to help a country and we're going to build roads. Well, the roads are going to the mines uh, that they're uh, exploiting the, uh, the individual country. So it, oh. the, the Chinese are not all altruistic about this. There's something in it for them, and they're playing the long game. Now, a senior official at the State Department tells ABC News that the Trump administration is just worried about getting aid to the Bahamas right now. They are welcoming help from all comers, they say. We'll have more on the strategy of all this on Start Here later this morning. Listen on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting app. Janae, Kenneth? Oh, really fascinating start yeah. here this morning. Our thanks to Brad there. And there's an effort underway to try to convince travelers to keep their plans to visit the Bahamas. Travel experts say it's important to remember that large areas of the Bahamas were not affected by Dorian at all. They say keeping plans to visit or making reservations to go there is a big shot in the arm, and it pumps much-needed money into the economy. Now to the wildfire emergency in Southern California. Strong winds are fueling this dangerous fire for a third day. And as people flee the flames, dramatic new video shows firefighters racing to save homes. Overnight, a massive wildfire east of Los Angeles is burning out of control. New video this morning shows firefighters frantically protecting homes in Riverside County. Spraying water on the flames just over the fence and throwing everything that's flammable on this patio into the pool. The fire has scorched close to 2,000 acres since Wednesday afternoon. 800 firefighters are now battling the raging inferno, but the difficult terrain and changing wind directions are making it harder to fight. The winds will come out of one direction in the morning, and then by the afternoon, we'll get a 180-degree switch. More than 500 homes in the area have been evacuated. Leticia Juarez with our Los Angeles station is on the front lines. The area that I'm standing in is under mandatory evacuation for the very reason that they're trying to get so many of the fire resources and personnel into this area so that they can try to save these homes. Just take a look at that. That's right behind this home we're here. And this morning, officials are closing schools and urging residents in the area to avoid breathing in the air. It's close, and I can see it continuing to burn um, and jump around. So I think we're going to, you know, keep our eyes close on it. Authorities believe lightning started that fire overnight. It was only 10% contained. 
Well, we're learning new details about the dive boat fire in California that killed 34 people. Investigators toured a similar boat inspecting a below deck bunk room and its one emergency hatch. Some tried to crawl through the hatch and said it would have been very difficult for 34 people to escape quickly. Surviving crew members say they tried breaking through doors and windows several times, hoping to rescue the trapped passengers, but the intense flames and searing heat drove them back. The boat's owner says they did everything they could. The crew was located in a different part of the vessel and the flames reached up to that part. It had already engulfed down below decks and um, they had no choice but to evacuate the boat. Uh, and Captain Jerry remained on the boat as long as he possibly could trying to get those radio calls in. Investigators say they're looking at several possible causes of the fire, including the boat's electrical system and cell phones that were charging. In medical news, doctors say vitamin E may be linked to a recent surge in lung problems associated with vaping. Health officials say vitamin E acetate has been found in marijuana products used by people who have gotten sick across the country. That same chemical was found in nearly all cannabis samples from people who, become, who became ill in New York in recent weeks. But health officials say they have not ruled out other substances as well. A Florida man's escape after allegedly threatening someone at a restaurant took him into a river in North Fort Myers Tuesday. The police aviation unit used infrared technology to spot the man, quote, practicing his breast and butterfly strokes. Rescue crews retrieved him from the water, but not before. Watch it here. You'll see in just a second. Whoa. There it is. The officer said he delivered them a single finger salute. That ain't nice. No. And police are on the lookout for a roller coaster that was stolen from a county fair in Ohio. Imagine this. The 20-foot coaster was seen on a traffic camera attached to a white pickup truck. It was in the parking lot of the Union County Fairgrounds when it was stolen. It's part of a traveling carnival. It's worth about $50,000. It won't be, be too long hard to spot it. before that pops up in a neighborhood. <laughs> They're like, you know Jerry's got a roller coaster in his backyard, <laughs> right? Someone's got a roller coaster. Yeah. Well, coming up, football season is officially underway, but some games are more important than others. How one game brought two towns together in healing after tragedy. But first, the search for the Loch Ness Monster. What scientists are saying Nessie might really be after this. Welcome back. We turn now to the American woman accused of trying to smuggle a newborn baby out of the Philippines. She was caught on camera at the airport. We're learning that she has no criminal record and that she first claimed to be the baby's aunt. ABC's Paula Ferris has more. Police say this is video of an American woman trying to smuggle an infant out of the Philippines. Watch again as she pulls the baby just six days old out of that sling and walks through the metal detector at Manila's International Airport. They were surprised uh, when they learned that a baby was inside the sling bag. Jennifer Talbot, who has been living in Utah, was arrested and charged with human trafficking. Here she is, handcuffed, being paraded by prosecutors in front of local media at times wiping away tears. According to local reports, she met the baby's biological mother on the internet. It's unclear if any money was exchanged. At the airport, police say she successfully cleared the immigration counter with the newborn concealed. But as she was boarding a Delta Airlines flight back to the United States, she was asked by airline personnel about her oversized sling and wasn't able to produce travel documents for the baby. Based on the instruction uh, on the uh, bag, it should be carried in front in an upright uh, position, but then it was not carried that way. So there was really an intention to conceal and to sneak out uh, the baby. Talbot does have other children, and she has reached out to the U.S. Embassy for help because if convicted, she faces a possible life sentence, which would be served in the Philippines. As for the baby's biological parents, both face human trafficking charges as well. The mother, Janae and Kenneth, telling investigators she simply wanted to give her baby up for adoption, but that baby is safe in the hands of local government. Janae. Our thanks to Paula. And some breaking news overnight. The president of Zimbabwe has confirmed the nation's former leader, Robert Mugabe, has died at age 95. So we're going to go across the pond to Julia McFarlane in the ABC News London Bureau for more. Julia, good morning. Happy Friday. Tell us about the legacy that Mugabe leaves behind. 
Hey, Janae, it's a complicated one. Robert Mugabe, he uh, has divided opinion for decades. He was seen uh, as the liberator of then named Rhodesia, uh, known as the founding father uh, of uh, Zimbabwe. He became president three decades ago uh, to much adulation and excitement um, for uh, Zimbabweans. He freed the country from white minority rule and he uh, had many hopes for the country and the hopes of all his people. But uh, he was then known as a deeply corrupt leader. Uh, he became known for uh, using fierce oppression techniques, responsible for uh, for a mass number of um, uh, human rights violations, uh, corruption allegations, and of course, hyperinflation of Zimbabwe used to be the breadbasket of Africa, then suddenly relying on foreign aid for food, becoming one of the poorest countries on the continent. Now. He was removed from power by a military coup back in late 2017. He resigned shortly after. Now he was confirmed dead this morning, having been receiving treatment in Singapore uh, and leaving behind a very complicated mixed legacy. All right, and let's get a Brexit check. That turmoil there in the UK. New Prime Minister Boris Johnson is pushing on despite conflict within his own party and his own family. Guys, exactly. It's been uh, a really, really rotten week for Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Uh, crazy to think that actually Parliament returned from their summer break only on Tuesday, and that is when the disasters uh, began. Boris lost his parliamentary majority uh, as a Tory MP, defected to a different party. He then lost two crushing votes. Uh, the first he lost a vote, Parliament decided to take control of the political agenda, and they want to push through a bill uh, to extend uh, Brexit. They they want uh, to delay it to avoid a hard deal Brexit. And then Boris's response was to call for an early election. That was also scuppered by Parliament. He's going to try again on Monday, but the news today uh, is that that's unlikely to happen because the opposition parties are banding against him, as well as steep opposition from his family. His brother, Joe Johnson, defected yesterday uh, as an MP, as well uh, as from his government position. All right. And Julia, moving on, Japan. Uh, they finished their first commercial whaling expedition in 31 years. A lot of activists not happy about it. How, what do we know now? After, why are they doing this after so long? Exactly. So they, as you say, they had banned commercial whaling uh, for decades because they were party to this treaty banning commercial uh, whaling. Now, Japan announced that they were going to be withdrawing from that convention and that they would be resuming commercial whaling uh, a few months ago. And today is the day that they brought, a f uh, they brought ashore their first catch, two minke whales. Now, it's kind of complicated because the Japanese have been whaling under research purposes, but everyone has been saying that that has been a guise for uh, continuing um, that practice of whaling and in fact the boat that brought those whales on board had the word research vessel painted off it. All right and um, earlier you mentioned that Parliament's fresh from holiday. Um, I believe that you are also fresh from having a few days off. Uh, people need to check out Julia's Instagram. I thought it would be a nice easing back to work. But well, it's more being, it's more like a baptism to fire. Well, but it, well, I have some Scottish news for you guys before you go. Yeah, and I was going to uh, say, yes, got us you've got some happier <laughs> fish news, apparently. Exactly. Well, that depends on what your point of view is. So a bunch of researchers from New Zealand, they have been doing a lot of uh, DNA testing uh, on Loch Ness. That is, of course, uh, that big, big Scottish lake in the Highlands, home to Nessie, the Loch, Na the Loch Ness monster. Now, they have determined that they could not find, uh, sadly, no dinosaur DNA, <laughs> uh, no big secret, no shark DNA. Uh, what they have found is that they found a lot of eel DNA, and they think that, that maybe uh, Nessie could have actually been uh, a large eel. Uh, there have been rumors that Nessie was, in fact, a large catfish or an eel. Uh, but, you know, guys, I'm not particularly concerned. Um, you know, Lo Nessie she's evaded exposure uh, and capture f of humans by you know for millions of years so I don't think uh, a group of researchers from New Zealand could have possibly stood a chance in trying to find her so uh, I'm not worried Julia I couldn't have said it better myself Nessie's obviously <laughs> a smart one so uh, yeah absolutely no, yeah we're not gonna Julia, track her down anytime soon <laughs> thank you so much we're glad you're back from holiday and back with us on it's morning America good have to see you nice be back. so our, our question of the day is do you believe this Loch Ness thing is all just an eel. Just what an eel. Think? Tell us in There's the no prehistoric dinosaur like 
thing in the pond there. Tweet us at ABC News Live. Let us know. What do you think? But now, let's check out our notifications. Starting with a big announcement from Nicki Minaj. The 36-year-old rapper says she is retiring from the music industry. She shared the news with her fans on Twitter yesterday, saying, quote, I've decided to retire and have my family. I know you guys are happy now. Do my fans keep repping me? And the tweet is adding fuel to recent rumors that Minaj is expecting a baby with her fiance, Kenneth Zoo Petty. No relation to me. The rapper has been nominated for 10 Grammys, won five MTV Music Video Awards, and earned a Guinness World Record for most Billboard Hot 100 entries by a solo female artist. And next is back to school for some of the youngest members of Britain's royal family. Four-year-old Princess Charlotte all smiles on her first day of school. There she is accompanied by mom and dad. The young royal, fourth in line to the throne, joined her big brother, Prince George, at a school in London. Prince William says Charlotte was very excited about starting school. Oh, and somebody's thankful that this guy was on a roller coaster with them and that he's got really Wait fast hands. Bam! That was a cell phone. Ooh. Someone dropped that uh, roller coaster going about 80 miles per hour, and the guy saw it and caught it. That's Incredible. pretty cool. Hey, millions of people up and down the East Coast saw sunsets like this last night, thanks to Dorian. This is from Florida. This phenomenon is known as scattering, which forecasters say is common after hurricanes. But we also know those outer cloud bands also extended to the Northeast. Bruce Newman from our Philadelphia station, WPVI, took this beautiful picture of the Delaware River and of the Ben Franklin Bridge between Camden, New Jersey and Philly. The sky, just so beautiful there. And football season is kicking off and a very special game played out in Texas between two schools traumatized in recent weeks by those mass shootings. On the Dallas Cowboys practice field, El Paso's Eastwood High School played Plano Senior High School in a game that almost didn't happen. Teresa Woodard of our Dallas affiliate has that story. Our nation felt broken when hate seeped into our state. A graduate of the school in Maroon. The, the man that, uh, that did that lived in our neighborhood, right? Is accused of killing 22 people in the hometown of the team in white. We couldn't imagine that somebody could do that to us. Nobody in El Paso would have done that. It's not something that Texas is about. But few things are as Texas as high school football under bright lights on a big field. We're all family, we're all one, and this is what this is, this is what this game's about. Hearts are still broken, but this is where healing begins. My son's a senior for uh, Eastwood, and uh, I came to see him play. This is Texas. And uh, to uh, show El Paso strong, and we wanna make sure everybody knows that we're gonna stay strong. Handshakes and hugs faith and family, tears and togetherness, sportsmanship and strength. It, it sends a message of you just got to keep going. You just got to band together. And it's just all about people being together. Texas is diversity, unity, and a little bit of swagger. And that's why you just don't mess with it. In Frisco, I'm Teresa Woodard. All right, thanks to Teresa there from WFAA for that report. Just so special there. Um, Texas, obviously football, very important yep. for them, and it can really help them heal during this very tough time. Nice way for those communities to come together. Well, coming up, what's on the schedule? Everything you need to know going on today. And the restaurant officials are watching closely to determine the extent of Dorian's damage. More after this. Here's what to watch out for today. Dorian is picking up speed as it rolls along the mid-Atlantic coast, bringing heavy rain and the threat of flash flooding with it. Tornadoes spawned by the storm have left behind a trail of destruction. Now tropical storm warnings are in effect for Massachusetts. The teen climate activist who sailed to New York in a zero admissions racing yacht is participating in a protest outside the United Nations. Greta Thunberg gained fame for organizing school strikes in Europe and will attend the UN Climate Summit later this month. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will speak at Kansas State University for the 190th Landon Lecture, one of the most prestigious speaking series in the country. 
a tribute to former Kansas Governor Alfred Landon. The House Judiciary Subcommittee will hold a hearing on oversight of the Trump administration's border policies and the relationship between anti-immigrant rhetoric and domestic terrorism. And a Soyuz spacecraft carrying the first humanoid robot sent to space by Russia will leave the International Space Station this afternoon. And RuPaul's DragCon kicks off today in New York. The three-day convention will feature conversations between RuPaul and Diane von Furstenberg and Whoopi Goldberg, as well as give fans a chance to meet and interact with their favorite drag queens and celebrities. Plus, don't forget to tune into The Debrief for an update on all our top stories in the briefing room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. It has been a long week tracking Hurricane Dorian, so let's end on a good note out there that there are blue skies ahead. One restaurant, time and again, has proven to be stronger than the most devastating weather. And businesses in North Carolina shut down in anticipation of Hurricane Dorian. But Waffle House stayed open. Generators are in place to make sure restaurants stay open, even if the power goes out. Managers say their goal is to make sure everyone has a warm meal. We often talk about that Waffle House index. So as yeah. we know, if Waffle House shuts down because it's a 24-7 restaurant. Things are bad. Things are bad, but, but if, that one stayed open. They've got that full menu going. You're an RHA. It's so good. Yep. The hash browns, the waffles extra syrup the grits Boom. that's it from us this week hey have a great weekend for those who are in the path or dealing with dory and the flooding please stay safe and we're thinking about you and we will see you on monday